Hi, I'm Lee Shaw with Geoprobe Systems, and today we would like to take you on a walk around tour of this 3126 GT, pointing out key features and then options on this unit. So the 3100 series is available in three base platforms. We have the under CDL truck mounted unit on a Ford F600. We have obviously the 3126 here behind me, which is a mid-sized track. And then we also offer this, uh, the 31 series mounted on a Terramac RT6, which is a wide track crawler type of platform. By design, the 3100 series DNA is for geotechnical drilling. Um, with the added option now of a direct push hammer where you can still collect your soil and groundwater samples besides all the geotechnical applications it's capable for. Now, one of the really unique features of this machine is the designed centerline head side shift, which allows once you're set up over a single borehole, um, you can shift the head quickly and efficiently from either a direct push application, your rotary application, or using your drop hammer. So we simply do that with a single lever here. We have a pointer base here, and then we have a pointer mounted on the head, and then we line that up. So once you have the foot tower positioned for drilling, now we're just shifting the head. We're not picking the foot up, we're not moving it. We don't have to reposition each time. This is a super unique feature that makes for high efficiency, safety, and just quick operation of this unit. This unit is equipped with the drop hammer. This one has a 140 pound slug in that. Our rotary head, this is equipped with the six speed higher torque version, 6,800 foot pounds of torque. We also have in the base unit, a four speed head with 4,000 foot-pounds of torque. So this one's equipped with a higher torque head, so you can, um, depending on what applications and, and power that you would need, you can choose between that. And then on this unique, again, remember, geotechnical drilling here, this direct push hammer, the power cell here, is actually an option. Along with the direct push hammer, then we have our rod grip puller, which is placed right here on the side. Now, along with this rotary head, I talked about the torque. We have a lever here which we can pull, we can shift down here to the rabbit side, then that allows us up to 720 RPM where we can set this unit up and then core rock. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to the control panel. Going just quickly across the top, just the, the levers and what, they, what their application is. We have our two main winches here, winch one and winch two. This is our rotation here for the rotary head. This is our head feed lever. This is our direct push hammer. And then this is our simple head side shift where we're wanting to shift over. Across the panel here, the below, these are our positioning levers for fold, extend, dump, wiggle, oscillation where we can oscillate the mast. And then this is for our winch. So this is a telescoping winch system. Right now, I don't have it extended up but we can actually then raise this on up, extend it up about another five feet. And from each one of those winches, then we can effectively hang 20 feet of rod. So again, this is telescoping. We can run it at this position or we can raise it on up, just depending on what, where you're working and your clearances overhead. So it is adjustable. And then this, this last lever on the end here is for our drop hammer and positioning it when we're taking samples with that. So right here in the center area, now is where we have our MD4 display. I'll just power that up. This is really kind of the heart of the display now. Um, a lot of information is available here. A lot of real-time information is happening from machine parameters to temperatures, to pressures, to RPMs. We have multiple uh, screens that we can toggle through just depending on if we're rock coring. We have a coring screen. We have a screen set up for CPT when you're pushing cone, but a lot of information here. There's a whole suite of diagnostic tools built into this. There's switch duplicate. If you have a switch that gets damaged or quits working, we can actually go in, say, turn the Moino pump on. We can turn the drop hammer on. Um, if we had a light kit on this unit, we could turn the lights on. So. Um, nice features that are just built into this that are just part of the unit and its design. So again, part of this MD4 display now, 
Um, we can navigate it uh, either through this um, dongle here. We can go back and forth through the different pages or we have our soft keys below, so we can use those. And if needed, we have a cover on it, but if it, if it needed, we can access the functions through this display because it is touchscreen. So um, I really like this. It's a little bit larger than the previous version of the displays, and it's also a color display, and it's very vibrant out when you're outside working in the sunlight. So it's very nice. Um, these two handles here, again, these are our, our manual rotation and our manual head feed. Part of the 31 series design was we wanted to have detent rotation and detent head feed for different applications. So now, if we're setting our rotation, we can simply pull the paddle down, and as far down as we pull it to the max, we can adjust the rotation speed depending on what gear we're in. Go back to neutral, and the same for the head feed on this. These two paddles are for our um, outrigger pads here. And you can notice when I pull those down that we have a, just a message that pops up. Um, there's a lot of different levels of messages that will pop up as we're operating the machine. Uh, this message happens to be that when we're operating the outrigger pads, I need to push this enable button. So without pushing the able button, that message will pop up. So it's, it's really a built-in safety feature. So somebody doesn't inadvertently hit one of these while the machine's being operated and activate one of the outrigger pads. So for outriggers and then across the bottom, now we have just our uh, simple on-off toggle switches, Moino, drop hammer, if we had a light package, we would there, our auxiliary A, our rotation speed, so this is a six speed. Right now we're on the low side, so from the control panel we'd have first, second, third gear. Shift over to the high side, four, five, six. And then this controls our regen, our fast retract, on, off, and then also once we get into the coring application or get into the CPT, that activates those. And then this is for our blade up and down. And then finally here at the bottom, we have our controls for our seven inch clamp, breakout wrench, and then our wire line winch, which is our third winch. Okay, since we just talked about winches, let's just segue into the winches. This unit is equipped with three winches. So we have our main winch, which is a 6,800 pound pull. We have our secondary winch, which is 2,500 pound. And then we have our wire line, which is 1,100 pound, has 250 feet of line on that. Uh, an option you could have instead of the, the 2,500 would be an 1,800 pound pull. Um, those come, the 18 and 1,100 pound pull, come with a quick release where we can quickly take the safety hook off and then uh, insert an overshot for rock coring in literally just seconds on that. Okay, so moving up to the, to the top side here of the control panel, we have another option. This machine's equipped with that. This is a head feed pressure control. What this does is when you're rock coring, it will actually, when activated, it will manage based upon how much weight you set, but it'll manage the pressure that you're applying to the rock at the bit face. So this again is for rock coring. And once you're set, using this dial, we're using our, our uh, dial, number dial over here, and then we can actually set it up measure the weight and then be consistent. So now we're just shutting off. We're going back to our next interval. We turn this back on and it will continue to maintain that weight. So this is really nice when it comes for rock coring and setting up for production rock coring. Also on this unit, it's equipped with a, a new feature, a new option for the 31 series and it's the MWD measurement while drilling. Um, cover here, this hood would actually be where the display goes for the MWD. So, and there's some different uh, additional items that are throughout the machine that are part of that package. Okay, we're gonna take a little tour down the operator side of the machine and go over the features, the options of the machine. Um, this unit is equipped with a Moino 3L6. And one thing I wanna note about this is we talked about the unique feature of the centerline head side shift. 
also for geotechnical drilling applications, you have to have good support for the Moino pump. This unit's equipped with a secondary hydraulic circuit. So we have a separate hydraulic pump operating the Moino, and then we have the primary pump then is operating the rotary head. So we're never arm wrestling for hydraulic flow. So this is separated out, the controls at the control panel, and I'm just amazed at how smooth the circuit operates this Moino and how slow you can actually turn it. So if, let's say we're setting up and we want to put a core barrel underneath the rotary head and we want to core concrete like we are right here. You don't need to flood that, you just need a little bit of water. Well, with this setup the way it is, you can just so precisely control the Moino from, from just a slight output to maximum output, not affecting the rotary head performance on that. So again, this one's equipped with 3L6. We also have an optional 3L8 and a hose pump or triplex pump, um, just depending on what application, what pump you need on that. This here is a nice flip up table. Once it's flipped up, it pins, it stays in place. This is area where you could do paperwork or, or set items, just whatever you want. It just makes kind of a nice little workstation right behind the control panel. While we're here, just want to point out that the unit does come standard with a tethered remote that can be hooked up. The tether hooks up right here behind our e-stop. So if we need to use a tether, but the primary operation would be through this wireless remote system. Very nice, robust system. Um, uses just uh, simple AA batteries on that, but uh, just a very nice remote system and two paddle to independently control each track as you're operating the machine. Okay, I'm just gonna move down here just a little bit. Again, I mentioned e-stop. This machine is equipped with four e-stops. So one on this side, one on the helper side, an e-stop at the control panel, and then also a cable e-stop. Both remotes are equipped with e-stops also if needed. So safety, again, the machine is really designed with a lot of safety in mind just for uh, being out in the field. Okay, this one has the options of the dual stacked 32 inch toolboxes. It's nice to open those up, put your hand tools, uh, whatever you like to. This one currently has the, the water hose that would come out of the bulkhead and go into the water swivel. And then this top box is part of what would be a CPT package. So this unit was ordered with the CPT package. This top box is where the data collector would be installed and then secured. And then we would plug in our different sensors from the string pot to the cone itself. This just gives you a nice place to put the data collector and then be able to seal that up. So again, that's an option also, which would include this third box. Okay, so now we're gonna move around to the back side of the machine. All right, now at the rear of the 3126 GT, we have what we call a stabilizer blade. This is a blade that can be lowered when you're in a drilling application to help kind of stabilize the machine a little bit, but it also functions as a carrier for our drop racks. So we have multiple styles of drop racks, which you load your tools in from the wireless remote. We can back the machine right up to the drop rack using the blade here pick up our drop rack, and then let the machine move the tool. So the blade's capable of about 2,000 pounds of lift on those drop racks. Inside this door would be our main electrical compartment. We have our battery here, and then we have our fuse box and relays positioned right here with a nice cheat sheet here on the top, just telling you which one, the fuse size, and then the relay and what relay it's for. Um, below here is our master disc disconnect for the electrical, so we can shut that off if we needed to at a time. Here we have an auxiliary hydraulic out. I had mentioned that when we were going through the control panel that we had the switch for the rear auxiliary, so this would be those here. And then inside of here is our fuel door. These doors, including the hood, all have locks on them so we can secure the machine up if it's left on site. So we can do that. Now, moving over here to the helper side, um, we have this rear carrier here. 
we call it a Shelby tube holder. You can slip anything you want to inside of this. It's just a nice place to slip hand tools or split spoons to carry whatever you need. This is a nice vise that's positioned here vertically. And then we can slip this out. We can place it here. And then this actually gives a helper kind of a workstation back here. We have a tray that's built into this five foot tool rack. We could set liners up on there. We could set split spoons up on there and um, just however you need to. It just an, makes a nice little workstation here on the helper side. Also on this tooling rack, we have this door up here. Pull this pin and then this lifts out and now we can just feed our rods in and out from the front. Put this door back on, pin it in place. That'll secure our rods going down the road. And while I'm standing here, I just want to mention the track system on this, this 30 series track system. From the remote, we actually have three speeds. So we have a low, medium, and then a fast speed on that, both forwards and reverse. Um, so just want to mention that, just a really robust track system, nice and wide tracks on that, gives you a really good ground pressure for tracking and mobility off-road. Okay, well that concludes our tour of the 3126 GT. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us at GeoPro 785-825-1842 or visit us at geoprobe.com on the web for additional information. Thank you.